Hi everybody. Uh, this is just a little video or a little uh, clip I'm going to do before the video to kind of fill you in on really the main purpose of this video, and that is uh, yes, I'm going to do a quick little time waster repair on one of the on this little AM clock radio. Uh, but the big thing is that I've been getting some feedback from you out there in YouTube land about uh, the quality of some of my videos coming out choppy or grainy or uh, any other thing and it's very frustrating and I think some of it has to do with uh, how I'm recording the video on the camera versus how it's being produced uh, using the Cyberlink software and then how it's being uh, you know how, how it's being uh, whatever you want to call it composed when it you know when it uh, processes on YouTube so I'm trying a new video setting I'm going to try to take a picture of how I have my settings here, and I'm going to superimpose them uh, over, the, over the image here so you can kind of see what I'm seeing when I set my camera up. And I'm going to post this up, and, you know, certainly uh, I'm asking you all for, for what you think, if you have any suggestions, any of you folks that are better at video cameras than me, because I'm not a video person as far as... Uh, you know, photography and video, you know, if it breaks, I'll fix it. <laughs> but uh, the cameras that I'm really good at are the ones that have uh, Viticon and Satacon and Plumicon uh, video pickup tubes. And, of course, those are almost non-existent now. But those are the ones I was really good at. And uh, once the CCD cameras and camcorders and things came out, uh, it really, you know, in my line of work, I don't work with those a lot. We do have uh, CCD cameras in medical imaging, but uh, they're a lot different than these ones. Uh, you know, uh, a little monochrome camera for a uh, modern cardiac cath lab will be upwards of $40,000 or more uh, for a black and white uh, video camera, 1K video camera. Just to give you an idea, they're a lot different than these. But anyways, uh, I'm open to suggestions, guys. Any, anybody out there that can, can help, uh, that would be great. And in the meantime, I'll keep experimenting and see what works and what doesn't. So enjoy this video and let me know what you think afterwards. Thanks a lot. Hello and welcome back to the bench. Uh, we have another little time waster radio here from my box of uh, <laughs> radios that I purchased. Uh, this one here is a Zenith clock radio, and it's AM only. And if we take a look at the back, it is vacuum tube. And let's see, chassis number 5, November 02, if you can see that. And it looks like the model, model number... N514C, so November 514 Charlie. All right. So, looks to be, well, the case is kind of cruddy, but the inside doesn't look too terrible. But I think before we get too much into it, we're going to take this one apart and just kind of check and make sure nothing came loose or anything like that. So, uh, let's do that, and uh, as soon as I get it open, we'll be right back. All right, and we're in, and if you look, this radio uses a couplet, or couplet, however you want to pronounce it. Now, all that is is an early predecessor to an integrated circuit. It's basically a ceramic uh, little composite part here, and it just has some resistors and capacitors uh, wired inside of it, and then the wires from that network coming out, and it just saves some space, and it's kind of just an early predecessor to an integrated circuit. And if you see, it's a pretty simple layout. Uh, ceramic disc capacitors, so there's really no caps to go bad. Um, I don't see an across-the-line capacitor anywhere other than this ceramic, which I don't know. I don't even think it's an across-the-line one. So, yeah, this uh, there's probably not going to be a whole lot wrong with this radio other than needing some cleaning and hopefully the two IF cans are good and hopefully this little motor here for the clock is good and uh, 
So maybe we'll get away with just some cleaning on this one. We'll see. But uh, let's brush it out a little bit, get rid of some of the dust, and then we'll get it hooked up to a Variac and see if it works. Okay, let's uh, turn this on. And uh, yeah. All right, let's try this out. Got about 50 volts on here. Give it some time to heat up. So far, no problem. Let's go up to about 60. Oop, I'm hearing something. I'm hearing some capacitor hum. Seventy five volts. Okay, well, definitely going to have to uh, change out the main capacitor. So, uh, I guess that's good. Um, but it does make sound. Now let's see if the clock runs. I'll put the voltage on it. I have the power turned off now and I have full voltage on it now. And look at that. The clock works. So I think if we clean this up and uh, change the main filter we may have a working clock radio that even the clock works. And that's pretty cool because the clocks on a lot of these um, fail. But uh, this one looked pretty pretty hefty. So, all right, let's see if, how hard it's going to be to get this chassis out of the case and uh, see if we can get it fixed up. Okay, so we have it all apart and I have the chassis out. And right there's our capacitor and it looks like they're just couple there's only two looks like two capacitors in there and I can't see what the capacitance is looks like 80 80 and 40 microfarads at 150 volts so we'll have to dig around and see if we have a couple of those and we'll get this thing clipped out and uh, check it out and uh, replace it and then we'll see if that uh, makes it sound any better, makes the noise go away. Well, interestingly enough, <laughs> since the last clip here, over two weeks has gone by. Yeah, two weeks. And uh, in that time I was gone, uh, the family and I actually took a trip to Walt Disney World in Florida. And uh, I'm proud to report that uh, I'm back here <laughs> in one piece, but I'll tell you what, that was the coldest week I've ever spent in Florida, let me tell you. Uh, we really weren't prepared for how cold it was. It was 81 degrees when the plane touched down, 77 degrees that night, uh, Fahrenheit, and the very next morning, our first full day at Disney, uh, the temperature had dropped all the way down into the uh, upper 40s. Uh, you know, 46, 47 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, for two days it got even colder than that, and almost to the point of snowing. And then uh, the last part of our stay there, it actually warmed back up a little bit and was, was pretty pleasant. But uh, we all had a really good time and it was fun. So anyways, let's get back to this now that I'm, I'm back in the swing of things here. Uh, as you can see, we have the radio put back together, got a couple of uh, capacitors put in there, and uh, if I zoom in, you can see I just put some electrolytics in there, it got rid of that old, uh, the old paper cap. Everything else was pretty good, I mean, in all actuality, I uh, really didn't need anything else. Uh, there was a little uh, 
across the line cap that I got out of there, I think, if I recall correctly. I've got the tube sockets cleaned out. Um, kind of brushed it down a little bit, deoxided the the controls. So let's uh, let's turn this thing on and see if it works. <laughs> It'll be a surprise for me now because it's been uh, <laughs> two weeks. So let's plug this in and got our little dim bulb tester on. And it's uh, nighttime, so we'll see if there's anything worthwhile on here tonight. The clock's running. That's a good sign. That's pretty cool. These clocks don't always work on these, but uh, these Zenith radios are pretty good. Oh, here we go. Yeah, I didn't think I was going to get too much tonight. I think part of it is that the radio needs some alignment. So let's do an alignment on this. Um, first of all, the yep, this pot feels like it's sticking a little bit, but but that's okay. Um, Turn this off. Let's feed a uh, 455 kilohertz uh, IF signal into the antenna and see what we get. Give me a second to get set up here. Okay, <clears throat> we got 455 kilohertz in there. Coupling into the antenna. And uh, let's see if we can get a uh, adjuster in there and uh, see if we can bring it up a little bit. Okay, we're going to use a little unorthodox method here. So uh, all of you analog meter folks are squirming in your seats as we speak, I bet. But I'm just going to use, uh, I'm on AC millivolts right across the speaker terminals. And I'm just going to watch my little bar graph and my voltage uh, on AC as I adjust this. So, let's see if we can... Right there. So we got that one. Now let's go over to this one. And there's also a, a lower one that you have to adjust which I'll have to probably take come in from the bottom somehow to get to. It's really touchy. Right there's about as high as I can get that one. And now we'll try the antenna coil. Hopefully it's the same size slug. Nope, that's worse. You can hear it gets clearer. And you can see it just climbing up a little bit. And then we kind of went through it very touchy. Right about there is where we want that to be. Okay. So now, let me change frequencies into uh, kind of on the low end here and let's see and uh, see what we can get there. And let me get another adjustment in there so that I can get the lower coil as well. Okay, I got this one done. Let me get into this one and see if we can get the bottom coil in there. Yeah. There we go. All 
that one was pretty close. Okay. All right. Come on. All right. So that's about as close as I'm going to get it. And uh, now let's see what we can do about the uh, the dial. Okay, so I just have a regular station. Uh, I'm dialed in at about 600 kilohertz, and I'm just tuned into it. And now we're just going to see if we can't uh, peek this up just a little bit, if I can get in here. Let's see how far we can get it to come in any better. There's about, it's kind of bouncing around there, and that's about all we're going to get out of that. Okay, well, pretty much that's, uh, that's just a quick and dirty <laughs> adjustment uh, for what it is. And um, let's uh, turn the radio back around and just see what we can get. Well, there it is. We got it. Here. So, I think a couple of the tubes are a little bit weak, and I think that, uh, of course, we're down in the, in the basement at the bottom of a hill. I say that in every video, but all in all, I think it turned out pretty good. It works, and I'm going to button it up, but really the main purpose of this video was that uh, I wanted to definitely test out the uh, camera with the new settings and I'm gonna get this posted up and hopefully we can get uh, get some of these problems with my camera resolved because uh, it's really frustrating how this has been working out so hopefully this will be good um, this wraps up this video I have a whole bunch of things coming in the mail here uh, the videos will be flowing out here after first of the year quite a bit, so stay tuned. Uh, in the meantime, uh, as always, I wish you all good, best of health. I wish you all peace, joy, and happiness in your lives, and hope everything is well with you. And until next time, we'll see you later. Thanks a lot, and remember to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.